Here's something I never thought I would be able to say on this channel. Over the last two years, I have met and worked for several of my childhood heroes, people I've admired for a very long time, like Professor Wendy Wood, Rory Sutherland, and Matt Diavella, just to name a few. It has been a wild and insanely fun journey to get to this point, and I've learned a lot about creating opportunities for myself along the way. And today I wanted to share my learnings with you and sort of condense my story into five tips for creating opportunities for yourself. So I hope you find this video useful. So let's get started with the first tip, which is simply just ask. Okay, so the first tip is just ask and it's as simple as it sounds. Just ask literally means you say to yourself, come on, let's just ask and see if they'll say yes to working with me. And that's exactly how I met Rory Sutherland the first time. I was running this behavioral science conference with Warwick University and we needed a headline speaker to sort of draw a big crowd in. And I thought, screw it, let's go and ask the biggest name in behavioral science in the country. Let's ask Rory Sutherland. I and my team fully expected him to say no, but to our surprise, he almost immediately agreed to come and speak for us. And so that's how I first made contact with him. Then I had a Zoom call with him a few weeks later. Then he featured on this channel a few times and at this point in time, I'm working for his team at Ogilvy and I have meetings with Rory Sutherland every few weeks. And this is somebody who I've admired for, you know, I don't know, seven, eight years now. And all of that professional relationship simply came from me going, come on, let's just ask. So I advise you to do the same. If there's somebody who you really admire, somebody you'd really love to talk to or work with, I would just have the guts and say, come on, let's just ask. And you know, the worst they can say is no. And if they say yes, then perhaps your life will be very, very different. Okay, so tip number two is about putting yourself out there. And by put yourself out there, I mean you need to have some sort of presence, normally online, that's gonna help other people know who you are. You need to have a website, a LinkedIn, a YouTube channel, a blog, or a TikTok, or something that people can find in order to know who you actually are. Because quite simply, it's very hard for people to offer opportunities to people who they don't know exists. That's exactly how I got in contact with Matt Diavella the first time. It was one of those opportunities that when I first started this YouTube channel, I would have never imagined that this kind of opportunity would come across you know, my email inbox, but it sure did. What happened was, is I was running this series called Fact Checked, where I would fact check other YouTubers' content about behavioral science topics. I made a video about one of Matt Diavella's videos on habits, and he watched it, and he respected the fact that I clearly was someone who knew quite a bit about habits, and he wanted me to help fact check one of the courses that he was making, which was teaching people how to build habits. It was an absolutely crazy opportunity to work with someone with, you know, as much of an audience as he has. And surely enough, a few weeks after publishing that video, Matt and I had a call on Google Meet, and I got to talk to him. Uh, and then he hired me to do this little bit of work for him, and it was really, really fun. And today, Matt Diavella and I chat a little bit on Instagram. He occasionally likes my photos and I always get very excited whenever he does. But you know, super nice guy and it's one of those crazy opportunities that I never would have ever thought would happen when I first started this channel. So that's what happens when you have this kind of online presence. You're basically increasing your sort of social surface area in the world and these opportunities sort of gravitate towards you and you, you can't predict what they are when you first start, but I can promise you that if you have an online presence that these kind of opportunities will just come across your lap. So that's tip number two, put yourself out there. Okay, so let's move on to the third tip, which is to give without any expectation of return. This is exactly how I met Professor Wendy Wood. I made a video about one of the chapters in her book, promoted it at the end of the video, saying how much I was a fan of the book, and I just published it, tweeted it at her, but never really expected her to see the tweet, watch the video, or care at all that I was doing this. But to my surprise, she did watch the video, she really liked it, and then she emailed me saying that she wanted somebody to be her social media manager, and I said that, yes, I will happily be your social media manager, and that's what I did over the next year and a bit. I was writing tweets for her every week, and she would correct them for me, and she taught me about habits by correcting my work, and that's kind of how I became a habits expert over that time period, is by working directly with Professor Wendy Wood, who just happens to be the world's leading expert on the science of habits. Now that entire professional relationship and story developed out of me simply making a video about her work and doing some free promotion for her 
which she didn't ask for, but I just did it anyway just because I was a fan. Now, I've also done this for several other scientists and books that I'm also a fan of, and I haven't got anything else in return from those, and that's totally fine because that's not the point. So that's like, like I said, the point here is that you just give without any expectation of return because by doing so, you know, good things just seem to come back at you. So my advice to you is that if there's somebody that you really admire, why not just do some free promotion for them, talk about how much you enjoy their work. Maybe you could even reach out to them directly, like, you know, I don't know, like write an article for them or design a thumbnail for them or whoever it is that you're, you're into, something that might be of value to them. Why not just reach out to them and, and do something for free without any expectation of return? And you never know, maybe you will get something in return just by doing so. So that's tip number three is give without any expectation of return. Okay, so the fourth tip is to keep trying things because the above three tips don't work unless you keep trying things until you find a formula that works. And to illustrate that point, I'm gonna talk about something which I've never talked about on this channel before because it's kind of cringy and embarrassing, but it's worth a good lesson anyway. Okay, here we go. This channel is not my first YouTube channel. In fact, this is my fourth YouTube channel and the first three were, should we say, a lot less successful. The first one I started maybe seven years ago was me playing this video game called Hearthstone. It's like this online digital card game that for some reason I was very, very good at and I decided to make videos about it on YouTube. Now, these videos were terrible. They were just uh, uh, clips from my Twitch stream, uh, no editing whatsoever. And yeah, surprise, surprise, nobody wanted to watch them. Uh, my second channel was uh, equally cringy, was a Fortnite YouTube channel where I would uh, record my Fortnite gameplay footage. This is the peak of Fortnite's uh, success, maybe like five years ago. And yeah, I wasn't very good at the game, so nobody wanted to watch that either. So <laughs> that channel kind of died. My third channel was called Pete Lifts. This one was uh, all about me and my journey in the gym, me working out, um, getting ripped and dieting and all that stuff, which is, you know, my main hobby outside of behavioral science anyway, is that kind of thing. And, you know, I really enjoyed making that channel for a while and I had, you know, huge success with that channel actually. I got a total of 120 subscribers, which was uh, absolutely massive for me at the time. I couldn't believe that uh, 120 people wanted to watch me talk about, you know, working out in the gym and stuff. But, you know, after six months of stagnation and sort of staying at around 120 subscribers for six months, uh, I just kind of gave up on the channel and stopped uploading on it. And instead I started this channel. And this channel uh, was the one that was actually the most authentic to myself. It was the thing that I'm most passionate about, behavioral science. I never made a channel about it earlier because I thought, well, behavioral science is way too niche for anyone to care about on YouTube. But turns out that uh, talking about something niche that not many other people are talking about actually appeals to more people than you think. And so this is great. So now I get to talk about what I'm most passionate about anyway on this channel. And this is my fourth YouTube channel. And this is the one which has opened up all of these doors for me and given me all of these opportunities that the other three just, just didn't. And so the thing to take away from this is that you need to keep trying in order to find a formula that works. The first thing that you try is probably going to fail and the thing that ends up working for you might look very different to how it was in the beginning, but that's okay. The point is to start on that journey of iteration, of practice, of trying things out, of trial and error in order to find something that is, is that works for you, that is true to yourself and that you feel really passionate about. And uh, that's how you're going to open up all of these opportunities, but it does take a lot of trial and error and it's about getting through that process uh, early on. Okay, so my fifth tip to you is to go easy on yourself in the beginning. Building these skills, these relationship building, networking and sort of content creation skills, it takes time. And it, just like any other skill in the beginning, you're going to be bad and you need to kind of be at peace with that fact that the first few, maybe even first 100 things that you try will be rubbish, but you will be better each time that you try it. It relates very closely to the parable of the potters. You guys probably know this story, but if you don't, let me tell you anyway. So in this story, there's this pottery class and the class is split into two groups. So one group is told to just make one pot for that entire semester. Whereas the other group is told to make as many pots as possible for that whole semester. And they would see at the end who would make the best pot. And what the teacher found in this story was that the people who were told to make as many pots as possible were not only making a greater quantity of pots, but were also consistently making pots that were better than the other group. 
And the reason they were doing so is because they had so much practice, they were constantly trying to improve on their process. And so through repetition and through constantly trying to improve, they finally got to a place where they were consistently putting out great work. And so that's exactly what the process of opportunity creation is like. Is, you know, you make a lot of bad stuff. I made a bunch of bad videos for you. It might be a bunch of bad blog posts or bad TikToks or whatever it might be. But by constantly trying to improve your process and by constantly putting out stuff into the world, eventually you'll get really good at what you do and that's when the opportunities will start following suit and it just starts to, to snowball and you build momentum in your career. And, that, and that's exactly what seems to have happened to me. I've, been, I've gone from being you know, a pretty ordinary average university student to being at the position I'm in now just through this sort of continual process of refinement and improvement through constant trial and error. So hopefully that'll help some of you guys get started, just sort of go in with the expectation that you're going to be bad in the beginning and that that is totally normal and okay because everybody is bad in the beginning and that eventually you'll get better and better with practice and time. Okay, so those are my five tips. I hope you guys enjoyed watching today's video. I hope it inspired some of you and hopefully you can apply some of those, those tips and lessons to your own life and I hope that your life is also filled with amazing opportunities. All right, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. So hopefully that made... I was running this student... expected him to say... What happened was is I was running this series called Fact Check where I would fact check... Um... <clears throat>